right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard the opening clip. I, Vin, I'm a uterusless man. <laughs> I do not have a uterus, which means I don't have an opinion on. I you should, have no rights to speak on this. I shouldn't have an opinion on this topic, even yeah. though the Supreme Court justices in Roe v. Wade were all men. But that's a different story. Um, uh, to my left, in the purple shirt, is. Hi guys, I'm Kay. Kay fellows. What's Kay. up, Kay? Kay, I have a very personal question for you. Do you have a uterus? I do. Okay, Kay has. I mean, last time I checked. Okay. Uh, to my <laughs> right or my left? I don't know. It's all gonna be flipped in there. Finn doesn't know his left from his right. You guys will love that in the comment section. I'm told. Uh, to my left is. Sorry. Sorry, do you have a uterus? I do. It was recently used for our son, Orion. Okay, <laughs> very good. Uh, and then uh, the tattooed lady with the Down I below. reject. Does that say I reject Planned Parenthood? Yep, that's it. I reject <laughs> shirt is. I'm Albany Rose, and I have a uterus, and I'm here to give Vin a uterus seal of approval so everyone can yes. fight me. <laughs> the uterus, that's like the ghetto pass, you know, yep. in the, when you're in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> you little white people. Oh, just come on, you're good. Yeah. You could say no. Anyway. Uh, I think Vin should have to get that tattooed on him somewhere. <laughs> like this stamp of approval. Like he yeah. has the stamp of approval. Uh, right there. Oh. The uh, uterus seal of approval. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so, Kay, do you, you identify as a Christian? I do. Yes, I do. I grew up uh, in a very fundamental uh, Christian home, went to a Baptist church my entire life. So I have a very evangelical background. Okay. And um, Albany, obviously you also identify as a Christian. I do. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Tell and us you, how you really identify. <laughs> uh, we can just be like atheist, keep it simple for everybody. Okay. So Albany is an atheist. Uh, Kay is a uh, evangelical Christian. Are, would you des describe yourself as like a, a hardcore, four times a week church going evangelical, Kay, or or no? Nah? Uh, actually, we currently don't attend church. It's not just because like it's not because we are like against attending church. It's just that my husband works like really crazy shifts, and I'm not the kind of person that like wants to take my children into church by myself. So we don't attend church right now. But you know, we teach our kids. You know, Jesus loves you, and like we want them to have that fundamental background. But um, I didn't have the best experiences growing up in church, so we kind of like are like wading in very slowly. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yep. Well, that's, that's, that. <laughs> <laughs> where after, we're after this, I'm having a, a Bible study with my boys because we're, we're, uh, my son is obsessed with marriage. He's 14 <laughs> years old. And so he wants to make sure that he's squared he's away. He's well prepared. He's well prepared for when he gets. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a great kid. Okay. So guys, um, I, I was perusing the internet and we've got a little channel and, and uh, one of my best friends in the world posted this uh, billboard and the billboard said, and I want to make sure I quote the billboard accurately. And um, it says, uh, rape is about power and control. So are abortion bans. Keep abortion safe and legal. And at that point where I said, I need to get Sorry and Albany and Corey. I look at look at look at Albany. I know. She's ready. <laughs> so ready. Uh, I said, I, I, I that's it. I gotta get the girls on and, and we, we gotta we gotta have a open and honest discussion. How does that hit you as women? Uh, Albany, I'm gonna let you go first because you're chopping at the bit. I just can't wait to see how many men respond to three women saying that the sign is bullshit. I'm really excited. I always love when bro choicers white knight for me and my uterus. <laughs> <laughs> it's hey. such a turn on. <laughs> you like to kill babies? Come here, baby. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> she... so, anyways, PG Jesus, let's do this. Um, I think it's super gross on multiple occasions, and I'll keep it like a TLDR version. Um, 
as someone who was raped throughout a year, as someone who's had my body violated from a young age, from 14 all the way to 18, um, and someone who's had an abortion, um, the fact that they want to compare that and think like, I've been told that I'm worse than my rapist before by multiple people, uh, especially like the really, primarily like the really hardcore, crazy feminazi pro-abortionists. But uh, it's not uncommon. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if Kay has been so told something similar, like she's a terrorist or she's something similar to a rapist. Um, yeah, I have but, to say, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but we had a, we had a young lady who, she was 11 at the time, where, and it was a bro choicer who walked by and said to her, Oh gosh. I hope you get raped. Now, this is a grown man saying this to an 11-year-old mm -hmm. child yep. who was just there with her mom, wasn't even actively protesting whatever people want to call it. At that point. Yeah. But it's a very strange thing where I'm seeing these supposedly pro-woman people when you're out there and you're, you're articulating a view that even as a woman – that's that's what gets marshaled. It's a very strange mm -hmm. phenomenon. But uh, I interrupted you. I'm mansplaining. Continue. No. <laughs> We're gonna pull out all the social justice. <laughs> Can't we? I'm all so that. excited. <laughs> no, um, I'm no, but I am glad you said that because it really a lot of people think these think these situations are um, they're new or like they're they're super rare and they're not. Like I've been doing this for almost a decade. And I have folders and folders and folders of this being said. And, you know, it happens in person too, not just online. Um, but, you know, really what, what is healthcare? Look at the definition of healthcare. There is nowhere in that definition of you getting to pay someone to in intentionally kill a separate human being. Um, even in cases of assisted suicide, we're not talking about third world countries where there are really, or God, even not even they're developing worlds. Um, but in a first world country, in a hospital that is up to codes, doing what they should be doing, they still have to talk to the patient and it has to be something that this person wants um, and make their wishes known. During an abortion, you're literally taking the choice away from the only person in that situation that has no choice whatsoever. Mm. And to me, if you are going to dare to step on the bounds of comparing something to rape you want to talk about having total control over someone else's body then a rape and abortion can go right there and i have zero problem saying that and i dare someone to come after me for it because my rape i can deal with and i'm not saying i'm not speaking for anyone but myself but my rape made me strong as hell and it put me through a lot of stuff and it messed with my mind for a long time but it's something that I was able to come back from and I'm very grateful that I've had the support system that I do. But when it comes to my abortion, that's something that I have to live every single day knowing that I allowed someone to kill my child. And especially having children now, having born children, there is no coming back from that. And again, I'm not speaking for anyone else. So someone wants to like listen to this and be like, oh, she's saying all rape, rape victims are like that. I'm not, shut up, Karen. Um, but. <laughs> Told you we're gonna bring them all out. We're gonna bring Karen into this. <laughs> You're saying this is a person who has been uh, sexually assaulted and uh, who's also had an abortion. Yes. And not... At the end of the day, it's there are both of those things take control over someone else's body. And supporting abortion rights, you are literally choosing to violate a separate human being with no choice. Wow. Biology. Okay, what's uh, what's your take? What was your take uh, when you saw the the uh, I was gonna say pamphlet, but the the billboard? Honestly, what makes me so upset whenever people use this argument and try to compare abortion regulations to raping someone is um, I don't have personal experience with you know either one of these things, but I have heard so many heartbreaking stories of how abortion was used um, as a weapon um, to victimize women who have been in horrible situations of, of rape or of molestation. Um, just this past weekend, 
uh, one of my dear friends, she's actually the founder and president of Rehumanize International, which is a pro-life organization. She shared her story this past weekend about how she was sexually assaulted. And uh, whenever she thought that she was pregnant, her rapist came to her and told her, you know, I will take you, I will pay for it, but I need you, if you're pregnant, I need you to take care of this. And whenever she told him that she didn't want to, he said, if you don't get an abortion, I might kill you. This is, this is something that, that rapists, that, that this, these horrible people use to oppress women. Um, my sister was telling me a story about a girl that um, was, she went to this summer camp that my sister uh, works at, and she went into the, uh, the preacher's office, and she just broke down crying and screaming, just so emotionally tormented because she had been raped by her stepfather and he forced her to get an abortion. And all she could say was, they made me kill my baby. And it's not just, it's not just rapists. It's not just these, these predators. It's the whole abortion industry that is using abortion to oppress women. You know, she told and I know Albany has personal experience with this too. She told the counselors that she did not want to get an abortion. She told the counselors that the man that was with her was her rapist, that she was being molested, that she was being attacked, and they did nothing to help her, and they killed her baby against her will. So for people to use us coming and saying that we need to legalize abortion because it is victimizing women, it is victimizing young girls, and for them to turn it and say that we are the exact same as the men, these filthy, disgusting excuses for human beings that we're the same as them, it makes me so angry. It just like, it lights just this fire under me that makes me truly just want to be even more pro-life than I am, which I don't think that I possibly could be, <laughs> but just lights that fire under you that makes you realize that, you know, we are doing what we should be doing and we are on the right side of history and we're going to make abortion illegal because these women and these young girls, they need us because the abortion industry is not going to help them and their attackers are going to use abortion to keep raping, to keep molesting them, to keep victimizing and oppressing women. You know, people have, um, um, thankfully, in the last, you know, five to eight years, come to the understanding of the other horror of uh, sex trafficking. Yes. Where girls are uh, kidnapped or sweet-talked, whatever, against their will into doing this stuff. I just want to read real quick. Girl 15, missing for a year, is found alive after her mother discovers porn videos of her online as Florida man who got the teenager pregnant is arrested. And this girl went missing for a year, basically. Oh. And um, he's, he's doing, you know, whatever. And, he, and she became, she was underage, by the way. She became so popular that she became a search ter term on this particular site. But the crazy thing was, he forced her to have an abortion. She ended up pregnant. So this girl, 15 years old, in this horrible circumstance, still wanted the baby. Mm -hmm. And he forced her to get an abortion. Now, I have literal firsthand experience with a sex trafficked young lady because we used to, that was part of the ministry. And we found her and she turned around. She's like, you know what? Let me think about it, yada, yada, yada. And we exchanged numbers and she was going back and forth. And that was the one you named, right? Yep. And we were talking about getting her a baby shower. And it turned out she finally told me that she was working the street and her boyfriend, who's her pimp, was forcing her to go in there and abort this baby because obviously he's looking at her as, as a dollar sign. And obviously if she's pregnant. This is going to um, hurt his profit and loss for the year. So when I saw that, um, that billboard, her face popped into my head. Um, how distressed she was. Um, we ended up losing contact. She stopped responding to me after a while, which I mean, you can do the math on that, you know, God's grace, maybe, who knows. Um, and then this story popped into my head and, um, and I was like, wow, like th this, this is this idea that people who are saying, uh, no, this is bad. I ask people all the time, if you're pro choice, how do you stop something like this from happening? 
if the guy says, I'm going to kill you if we don't get this abortion, what is that 16-year-old girl going to say? Well, and more importantly, is like the industry isn't going to help her. You know, she goes into, uh, walks into a Planned Parenthood and says, I don't want to have an abortion, but, you know, my boyfriend is, you know, my rapist is threatening to kill me. If I don't get an abortion, what can you do to help me? They're not going to do anything for her. Yeah. Oh, well, and it's, I mean, I, I don't, I have never, I've been to Planned Parenthood meetings. I've been to narrow meetings. I follow Planned Parenthood even after they block me. Like I, I narrow, I follow um, a, a abortion American access or whatever it's called. Like I follow all of them because I want to be kept up to date what they're talking about, what they're doing. If there's things going on in my location, what can I get into? Um, and for years and years and years, I've never once had seen any of them hold a genuine conversation that talked about what to do in cases like that. They don't address the coercion of abortions. And I have friends that tell me, oh, we, we talk about all the times in these groups and stuff. And then I'll, I'll have like a, a sock account that I'll go in with the groups and I don't post, I don't troll or anything. I just look for these and I never see them. Mm. And almost any time, actually a hundred percent of the time, anytime I talk to pro-choicers about this, they always say, well, well, that's not what we're about. We're pro-choice. You know, we're not pro-abortion. That means if someone doesn't want to have an abortion, then they shouldn't have to be made to have one. But then where are these conversations? Yeah, exactly. Obviously, this is happening. You don't have this many tens of thousands of stories, if not a million stories, when you look at the number of sex trafficking all around the world. And I mean, when you look at it, you know, we have about 130,000, give or take, abortions every single day. That's only what's reported right. here in the U.S. Every, states don't even have to, they're not even mandated to report all their numbers, let alone worldwide. Sex traffickers aren't exactly mailing in their numbers either. Right. And so when you think about how often this is happening, I just, it really makes me question. You know, like the March for Life, um, I don't know if you guys saw my post, but um, basically uh, abortion access was there and the thank God for abortion people were there and they were within a foot of the I regret my abortion people, men and women screaming in their face for a good 20 minutes. You couldn't even hear these women telling their stories, many of them rape victims. And they were like grabbing their crotches and saying, you know, rape this. And like, it was disgusting. The video footage is unbelievable. And I look at this and I'm going, do you have it? Uh, yeah, my friend Scott uh, sent it to me. I'll send it to you after this if you want. We'll, we'll include it because people, People don't believe us. When I, when I t tell the story about the 11 year old and the grown man saying, I hope you get raped today, they don't believe us. You know, to be honest with you, when we started doing, um, you know, pro-life work, there was a girl that went along with us just because she had met us and she was interested in seeing what we were doing. She was pro-choice all the way. Oh, and that's actually right. what changed her mind that's was right. the behavior of the people on the pro-choice side and how disgusting and vulgar they were and the way that they acted, the things that they said, you know, like, like he gave the example of saying to that 11 year old, you should be raped, you know, stuff like that. Like one time when we were there, there was very few times where when you try to talk to somebody where they'll like kind of stop because you have like the people escorting them yeah, in the that work. And you have the police. For, yeah. That work for Planned Parenthood. But one of the times I started telling the other girl, like you have options, like this is not your only option. I said, there's adoption. We can help you. And she stopped and she turned around and she looked at me and I was like trying to say, you know, as quickly as I could, because I knew that time was limited. And then her, her guy that was there, like took her physically turned her and he turned around and screamed in my face, you know, cursed at me. He shut shoved. the F up. And, and then he shoved her, shoved her into the building. And it was so like, I, I remember that feeling of being so frustrated because I was like, it's such a lie to say pro-choice. There was no choice about that. When she was presented with choice, they shut it down. And right the, the people, the cops. the cops, the people that yeah. escort the girls into Planned Parenthood, nobody said anything. It was just so terrible. And I thought, oh, this girl was second guessing it before she went in and she's inevitably going to feel the weight of that after it's done. And when she does, and she remembers the moment where she could have turned, I, don't, I just felt so sad for her because this guy was so much bigger than her and like just obviously had a lot of influence and control over her, but she didn't look like she wanted to do it. And I thought if this happened, like you hear stories about what happens, but when it happens in front of your face, you're like, then this must be happening a lot. If I have seen it personally. Yeah, I explain to people all the time whenever, you know, I used to do sidewalk advocacy.
advocacy before I had kids. You know, I don't get out a whole lot anymore because it's not an environment I want to take my kids to. But I tell people whenever they ask me, you know, how can I get involved with, you know, sidewalk counseling and stuff? It was like, before you even look into like local groups that do sidewalk counseling near you, you need to fully realize that like, if you're doing this because, you know, you want to, you know, feel good and feel empowered and get involved in like pro-life activism because it makes you, it makes you feel good as a person. It does like sidewalk at this case is not where you want to start because you will leave every single time. Even if you, even if you change someone's mind, even if you help someone, you're still going to leave there feeling very, very emotionally, Mm -hmm. mentally, physically exhausted and very, very defeated because Mm -hmm. for everyone that you do save, there's are 10 more that you did it. And it's, it's very, very rough. It's very taxing on you as a person. Um, yeah. And you need to be prepared for that because so yeah. many people don't realize that they go in thinking like, we're going to save some babies. We're going to save some women. And they don't realize how defeating it actually feels. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you said that because the f- first, cause so obviously uh, to recap, obviously I've had an abortion and like when I was there, my dad just had his arm around me and he was leading me into the clinic. He knew I didn't want my abortion. There was a guy, there was a fairly older gentleman out there who's probably 65, 70. And he was just saying, I have choices. And my dad very ironically was like, you know, well, yeah, everyone has choices as he's like leading me in against my choice. And, you know, I, I wrote on my abortion documents, I want to keep my baby. That was never addressed. So either they didn't look at my medical records, which is dangerous, or they didn't care, which really proves the pro-abortion side of it. How old were you, Albany? I was newly 16. Just, so 15 just turned 16. Yeah, just a couple months after. And, like, I didn't know what I know now, you know. I had no – because I was raised in my most, like, sponge-like years. You know, crisis pregnancy centers didn't exist. Like, literally, Planned Parenthood is the only thing I ever talked about in high schools. Yep. You know, I went to a high school uh, in more south where I am now, and it's the richest high school in the state of Colorado. So it's very preppy, very uppity, and Planned Parenthood was, like, the thing. That's just was common knowledge. I didn't know there were places that teen girls could go. I had no idea. And, but, I mean, I, what, what you know, how it started saying, it's just, I remember, well, she and Kay were saying, I remember the first time I ever went outside to walk counseling, and I can openly admit part of it was like, feel good. Um, obviously I wanted to save, but like, it was, it was just this, it was kind of like a blind passion because I remembered what I went through and I was so determined, like I've been there, I've been where she was, I will get through to people. And not to dog on pro-lifers for a second, but I also, I do think it's important that the pro-life people talk about the issues on our own side. So it's not this idea that we're all, you know, we think oh, we're yeah. perfect. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually stopped going to the, uh, one, cause we're down one car and it sucks, <laughs> but uh, I can't get to the Planned Parenthood anymore, but I actually had to take a couple of months break because this kept happening. And it was, it's, it's devastating when a pro-choice person or a man does what that man did to that girl, but it's even more devastating to me when I watch pro-life people push people into the abortion clinics. And one of the first couples I ever talked to, I was, my heart filled with joy because this girl, she turned around to me and I, I brought these goodie bags and there was nothing like, hey, you're going to kill your baby. It was all supportive. It was, here's a resource to a clinic that's literally less than 50 feet away. They open in less than a half an hour. Like, here are all these things. We're prepared to do baby showers, help you financially. And this girl, like you could tell how hesitant she was, but she was ready to like take this info. She was grabbing the bags and and looking through it. And like, she was ready to talk to me and her boyfriend was hesitant and he wasn't really into it, but he was following her lead. And we maybe talked for a minute and a half. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of these older men and women, like 50, 60 year olds, with graphic images and Bibles came up who it's like, they didn't have anything else to do. So they had to come swarm, which if you ever sidewalk counsel, swarming someone is the worst thing worst, you could ever absolutely. do. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then of course, on, yes, exactly. And then on top of swarming, it was, you're going to murder your baby. Don't do that. And I was like, people don't realize they, whether or not they know it's a baby it's not about the baby in that moment. And I've been ragged on so much by, by pro-lifers, but generally anyone who's taken a sidewalk counseling um, course or been, 
they teach you that you need to focus on the woman. You need to remind her that she's not alone. Because she's scared for herself. It's self-preservation. That's a normal human psychological thing. And most basic instinct. Exactly. And so it's just. Yeah. My line been... was. Sis, if you're going for an abort, because, you know, Planned Parenthood does a lot of things, you know, mammograms. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they also throw free baby showers. I want everyone to know that. Call yeah. up your local Planned Parenthood. You read them. And they have the best prenatal care. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and my line is always, we can help you. Um, and and I, I think, so I want to pull back. Number one, the when we're talking about how toxic a, a lot of these pro-choicers are, we're not saying, I'm sure all you ladies will agree with me, we're not saying every single pro-choicer on the planet is a toxic, evil person. No, who no absolutely. No. And talks about raping 11-year-olds. That's not what we're talking about. That's happening on literally the field of battle, okay? Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I don't know what everybody believes, but definitely there's a, definitely a spiritual sort of uh, atmosphere that's there that's just different, man. It's if you, unless you've been there, like it's, it's different. And I, I love what you guys said. Like, look, I've been spit on, mm -hmm. uh, people threaten to kill me, throw, okay. me no. throw me through a window. Our kids, we had the kids had stuff thrown at our kids. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. He, he, yeah. There was this guy that used to work at a, you know, he hated it, like literally hated us, but he knew I wasn't going to touch him. So he'd get in my face and all that. I'm like, this is the only situation in which this little dude I would know. ever get in my face. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite one of all time was uh, one person, because I come from a big family and I'm, I'm very vocal <laughs> about my family because I'm super like people find it super cool my mom is currently pregnant with my with her 14th child my, oh my 16th gosh. sibling so like i come from a huge family i love pe to, like telling people about my family uh but one pro-choicer uh one pro-choice -pro like online troll told me that she was going to slit the throats of every single one of my siblings in front of me then my parents then my kids and i'm like Girl, how much time do you have? Like, there's like 20 of us. <laughs> like, <laughs> all, all that to say is you've got to have a certain type of temperament. And I remember having a conversation with a guy and saying, look, bro, if you can't keep yourself together, you're out. Yeah. And this guy was 6'4", whatever, whatever. Yeah. You've got to have a certain type of temperament. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect or that Sori's perfect. There's been times when you've been like, yo, you should have, yeah. you should have been, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, We've all been there. But I do. Not think I am perfect. Oh, the hell y'all. <laughs> but we all hope to be like you one day. All of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Time out. The, the thing I'm gonna do. You guys good for another half an hour? Yeah, we're good. This is great, guys. You guys are doing really, really good job. This is going to help a lot of people, I believe. Uh, but before before we get into the science, because I'm going to get into some science um, a little bit here so that we can dispel some myths. I know all the... The reason... So when we're talking about... All of us have, have experiences, whether it's Albany, 15, 16, getting not shoved into a clinic, her dad guiding her into the clinic, the highest authority figure in her life, and then putting on the document, I don't want my abortion, it happening anyway. Mm -hmm. Sorry, reaching out to a girl, almost having her turned around, and then she gets, that per person gets shoved into the clinic, past the police, by the way. Think about that psychologically, mm -hmm. what that means. Like, if the cops aren't going to protect you, and this is, a, I I'm just going to put it out there, this is a black dude that mm -hmm. did this, and I thought to myself, this is the only scenario in which a black dude would be able to physically assault someone in front of a police officer and nothing happens. Yep. Yep. This is the only time. Uh, and then Kay talking about those situations, the girl that was on the porn site, and then she ends up. And here's my point. This is one of the main reasons I am against any sort of death penalty or penalty period for women who yes. or oh, contemplate or attempt to Yes. Because yes. I will tell you something, as a man, I've seen so many freaking times when the woman is left or the girl is left, you were 16, that's Zoe in three years, two years, where the woman is left to deal with this existential burden by herself. And now 
some of you pro-lifers want to put that same woman in a situation where not only does she bear the psychological burden, but now she's going to have to deal with the legal burden and her life may be at stake. Get out of here with that. No way. Yeah. I don't no call way. them pro-life. Like I'm, no I'm going to fall on that sword right now. Like anybody that has ever made this argument for me, I'm like, I, I sh I'm straight up with those. Like you're not pro-life. You don't pro -life. understand what, you don't understand what we're doing here. You don't understand our, our, our mission. You, you, you're just, you're in the way, so just leave. <laughs> you, to me, honestly, it's years and years of bitterness, and now Absolutely. we get out on these girls. And yep. and I'll I'll tell you something else. The vast majority of the people that were sidewalk working with us, in our experience, were women. And among those women, the vast majority of those women were post-abortive women. Mm -hmm. Yep. So especially, and, and you know what, the, there's, a, there's a small contingency of people, and I know all these people, I, I, I literally know these people, and I'm not going to name drop them, but, but these are Christians, and in Christianity, the major value is supposed to be redemption, and the ability to come back from doing the worst thing possible, and that mm -hmm. God would forgive you, and that you can, you can turn things around, the Apostle Paul, the woman caught in adultery, and for Christians to be advocating for the death of women. It's who, disgusting. And, and, and if you've been on the front lines, you know that a lot yeah, of these girls are doing this because they're being forced into yeah, the that's And the you still want to kill them? Yeah. You know... I'm preaching, I'm sorry. But you know that some of our best assets, the Albany Roses of the world, and I could name other people. I that guess. Are, you know, like these are post-abortive women who are now going on the jihad for, for these little babies. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that she shouldn't be here and all these other women shouldn't be here? Like you need to get out of the freaking way, honestly. Honestly. People, people like that, you have, you have both sides of it. And, uh, you know, anyone follows my Facebook ever, you watch me constantly talk about this, is that you have the extreme pro-choicers pro who genuinely just love abortion. They, it is the end of the day, they don't care about kids, they don't care about women, they just love the idea of abortion so much. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you have generally some sort of religious person who, they don't actually love the babies or the idea of a, someone being repentant or looking for Jesus. Their God complex is so severe that God could stand before them and they would tell God how wrong he is. 100%. Because, and, and that's, that's those people. And I mean, God knows how many of them we've run into. <laughs> that, it, it, God, God knows how many have blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> you have somebody saying that they're pro-life and then they're like all about saving the babies, all about saving the babies, but then they don't want to have any more come out of their paycheck to help support these babies that, that their moms need help. Or they're okay with, you know, sending all these bombs to all these places. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, are you pro-life or are you yeah. just pro-life when it's convenient for you? When well, it's and the most ironic right. thing about it is, like, they're almost always religious. Like, like 9.999% of the time, they're almost I'll, always I'll religious. Really nice. It, <laughs> these people that are calling for the death of these women, I have never met a non-religious person. Yeah, well, like the, like the huge irony of that, and like I think that one of my favorite parts of this whole weekend is I actually attended the, uh, the youth rally at the March for Life because my sister wanted to go, and I didn't want to leave her unattended. Um, so I got to go and sit in, and uh, one of the guys that works for Priest for Life, he gave his personal testimony. His name is Brian Kemp Kemper, I believe. Um, yeah, he he yeah. has an amazing testimony, but at the end of his testimony, he went for like <laughs> he like took a gut punch um at the church because he's talking about how if you look at the statistics of the women ah. that are religious and christian affiliated wait, wait, because wait, 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 they hey, are hey hey you what? you froze you, you froze for two Did seconds I freeze? you froze Did for I freeze? After you said uh, after you said gut punch, it kind of went out. So start over one. Yeah, this. like okay. So he took. Yeah, he did. He went for the throat with the church because he talked about if you look at the statistics, there are a large portion of the abortion statistic made up of women in the church, and it's because these girls they have sex out of wedlock and it becomes. <sighs> what keep happening? <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> Come back to the light. 
come back to Jesus. <laughs> Am I back? Wait. Am I back? Yeah, yeah. Am I back? Yeah. You were, you were talking about um, how well, these girls will have sex out of wedlock and then yeah. it cut off. Yeah. And then they get, they're so terrified to tell their parents, to tell their yeah. youth leaders, to tell their pastor that they are pregnant outside of wedlock. So they, they run to the only place that they know they can run to, which is the abortion clinic. And yep. he's like, if you guys will stop being so judgmental, if you guys will stop, you know, just preaching about love and actually showing love to the young women and the older women and the girls in your church, that they don't feel like they have to run. He's telling the story about, you know, his finding his 19 year old daughter curled up in the fetal position in a hallway, crying her eyes out because she found out that she was pregnant outside of wedlock and she was so terrified that he was going to be mad at her, that he was going to hate her, that she was so terrified. And, you know, he just picked her up and told her how much he loves her. And if parents, if youth leaders, if these people inside these Christian churches would stop hating and spending so much time judging yeah. how many more people, how many more babies and women would they save from these abortion clinics? Yeah. If they would just practice what they're preaching from the pulpit every Sunday. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to mansplain again. Okay. <laughs> uh, biblical perspective, sure. Premarital sex, wrong. However, Psalm 127.3 says, children are a heritage from the, from the Lord. Your offspring are a reward from him. So I'm pleading with you, if you're a Christian and your 14, 15, 16-year-old girl ends up pregnant, what you say to that girl is to say, hey, you sinned, but the fact that you're pregnant shows that God's still with you because <laughs> yeah. he rewarded you with a baby. Yeah, he's given you this beautiful gift. You know, I actually have a personal story. I'm not going to share too much detail because I don't know if people that I went to church with are actually watching this, but I had a really close friend in high school and uh, she was, you know, we didn't, we didn't have access to safe sex education. So she was, you know, she was getting sexually involved with this guy. She wasn't using protection and I was genuinely scared that she was going to get pregnant or she was going to end up with STDs. And so I went to my mom and I told her and she went, she was actually our pastor's daughter and uh, we were very, very close with their family. So she went to um, my best friend's mom, our pastor's wife and told her and they cried together because they were so scared for her daughter's well being. But um, it was, you know, our pastor actually ended up stepping down and leaving the church. And years later, I went down to see her at her high school graduation. And she, you know, one night she just, she opened up to me. She's like, my my dad still won't look me in the eye whenever he talks to me. He still is so angry at me for what I did that, you know, because he was so upset that he, he lost his church and he lost his flock and he had to move to a different church. And it, he blamed her for that instead of taking responsibility for his, his lack of leadership as a father and the fact that, he, you know, his daughter was running to some other place to find love and acceptance because she wasn't getting that from him. You know, it's, it happens way more than the church ever wants to admit that it does. But it's a huge problem in the evangelical church that is still not being addressed. 100%. Go what ahead. Jesus are these freaking people reading about? <laughs> I mean, how many times I've heard that? The first baby I ever got to hold because my story helped save his life from abortion. My friend was afraid she had her abortion appointment scheduled because she watched what her entire congregation at church did to girls that got pregnant out of wedlock. It's and I'm terrible. like, I don't, it's so hard not to curse right now. I'm like, fuh, 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 fuh. <laughs> go ahead. We'll just do a little, <laughs> <laughs> just beaving, beaving, be. Yeah. I, 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 you guys have no idea. So I'm going to like share something more super fun and personal. I don't talk about a lot. So, um, nothing made me an atheist. Like I have never been mad at God a day in my life. I've had, I had the best personal relationship growing up. I actually have never understood how people get mad at God, especially if you believe in free will. Um, I literally woke up an atheist and I was scared and I cried and I prayed and I begged God to make me believe, but I couldn't. And I, and for six years this year, I have been open to believing. I've never been like, God doesn't fuck me. I'm just not to beep that one. I'm sorry. But like, I wish so bad I believed, especially because I would love to just 
travel and go speak at churches. You guys have no bad, no idea how bad I want to go speak at churches and be but like, you know what? Cool. You're not well, like, I would love to go back to the church that I grew up in and talk about abortion and talk about the problems that are facing young women in the church. They don't want you there. They don't want to hear it. They don't, right. they, they don't want that. Christian. Even if yeah. you're a Christian, they, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't want you. There. As a matter of fact, you'd have a better shot as an atheist because they don't listen to that broad. She's an atheist. <laughs> yeah, I want to go because like I mm, I don't know that that just that I understand why a lot of atheists are pro-choice a lot of them grew up religious and something happened where they got pissy or mommy didn't love them enough and all of a sudden they're liberal they're atheists they're screw you and everything you believed in and they don't look at the separate issues right not all but just about every freaking one I've met I, I went through that phase <laughs> so did I. He, just stop that <laughs> but then, I, then I look at these Christians and I just it it that's where I get angry because as someone who is such who holds such rejection for literally anything supernatural uh like I totally like, and, hmm, how on God's green earth do you read this book where God doesn't talk about hate a lot but at the top of that list, it's the shedding of innocent blood. Yeah. And wow. you think that you now get to play God and stand by the slaughter of millions. And that's just in your own country. Like, I I, I need to start my own podcast just to rant about this. <laughs> yeah. I get so <laughs> angry. I'm so mad. Albany, you and I should do a podcast together and we'll just, like, rant. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> you guys should. Yeah, no, I, so, but I, I feel it. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I love doing this with you guys because I'm so glad that even from all different backgrounds, all different experiences, we can come together of like, people are being hurt. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Whether you're God or not, this is not okay. Whether you're pro yeah. choice, pro life, like these women deserve better. Exactly. Exactly. Like my, you know, my family still goes to that church, but like I, I, I rant to my mom and she's very, very accepting of it. Cause I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, children are dying. Women are dying. People are suffering. Like get over yourselves and address like the actual problems. Like you want to get up into the pulpit and talk about how like divorce in the church is a serious issue. I get it. Like, okay, divorce in the church is a serious issue, but people are literally dying and right. you're going to ignore that. Right. right. Yeah. The Christian post posted in 2015, 70% of women who get abortion identify as Christians. And I just want to say, and, and a lot of this brothers, a lot of this is on us. I remember somebody sat and told me that their dad told them when they were started dating, if you end up pregnant, like I'm kicking you out. And I said, that's, the, I, and, and the person was telling me like, and it worked because the, the, the guys, girls never got pregnant. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's, you know of. that's the quickest way to march that girl to the abortion clinic. We yeah. are, we are. So we, we've already talked about the secular pressures that take away the choice from, mm -hmm. from these, from these women. But there's religious pressures that take away the choice from these women. And yeah. a lot of you dudes are good with slaughtering your own grandchildren so that you can have a good reputation right. around your other set right. of religious hypocrites. Now, well, look. And, you know, you want to talk about, you know, we're talking about how it's important to call out the problems within our own movement. This is a serious one because the pro-life movement, you know, for better or worse, was founded by religious sectors, a lot of the larger pro-life organizations are pro-life and they're not addressing this issue. This issue is no. not being given the spotlight that it needs to be given no. by these large religious the pro-life organizations. Everything else under the rug. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, by way of confession, well, this is something that's been bothering me for years, is that, you know, I obviously grew up in a religious home and you know, sex outside of marriage was absolutely terrible. And if you got pregnant, that was really, really bad because then it obviously makes it apparent to everyone that you were having sex outside of marriage. And if somebody got pregnant within the church, again, kind of like what you were saying, Kay, like people looked down on that person. They judged that you person. You were shamed. You were shamed horribly. Yeah. These yeah. poor girls are being yeah. like, it's like the walk of, like, I don't know if you guys watch Game of Thrones, but whenever they walked her yeah. from the church no, back right. to her castle and spat on her and yep. threw things at her like this is what we're subjecting these teenage girls yeah. to and we're wondering why they're running to abortion clinics right 
Absolutely right, because they saw what happened to somebody else, so they don't want to see that happen to them. Um, anyway, there was uh, somebody that's uh, within my family, not immediate, but within my family, and she had gotten pregnant, um, and she chose to keep the baby, and um, there, there was a baby shower. Ugh, this bothers me still to this day. There was a baby shower that was planned for her, and um, so I couldn't go, obviously, to the baby shower, because if I go to the baby shower, then it promotes sex outside of marriage. So I got a gift for her and I brought it to her at her where she was staying. And I gave her the gift and I said, you know, I can't go to the baby shower because, you know, sex outside of marriage is wrong. And if, you know, and, and it was almost like, I just remember the feeling like I had created this environment of shame for her. Yeah. And I felt so bad about it, you know, but there was like nothing. At the same time, I felt like I had done what was right according to my religion, according to what I had been taught. But I never forgot that, like, especially as I did pro-life work, I began to see, like, she kept that baby and everything was against her at the time. And then she even had, like, my family coming at her and who knows? I mean, my, my family is, a lot of my family is, like, one part of my family is Catholic and then the other part is Christian. It's actually, there's, like, no atheists in my family. Everybody claims that you know. to be, yeah, that everybody <laughs> is Christian. Um, so it was a very religious, well, no, there's, I do have one uncle, yeah. But everybody else all claims to be, you know, some sort of religion. So, you know, I know that I just wish that I would have brought that verse to her. And, you know, my, my mom said, I told my mom this actually like a couple months ago. I said, why did I follow along with what, you know, cause she had the same mindset at the time as well. I'm like, why did I follow along with that? Why didn't I think for myself and just say, Hey, she's keeping this baby. Cause now my mom sees it that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, she's like, you should reach out to her. And I keep thinking about doing it. And then I don't, I don't, but I do. I feel, I feel terrible for taking part in that. Yeah, so. yeah, I'm just gonna like shamelessly plug here like while we're talking here like I'm not involved with this organization whatsoever But I love what they do. There's an organization. They're called embrace grace and they're actually mm -hmm. they like they set up in churches and they help you know women that have these these pregnancies like you know they throw them baby showers they do fundraisers they're just like there's a support system within these churches so that these young girls and these women have support systems whenever they're going through that it's incredible definitely like for the people that are going to watch this this video yeah. tomorrow definitely check them out and support their work cuz they're amazing yeah and, and christians let me just speak into this whole concept of shame and things like that i'm just going to read psalm 127 3 again Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. That means if the 16-year-old girl got pregnant, God is the one that rewarded her with a child. God rewards sin, it's called grace. That's, what, mm -hmm. that's the reason all of us are alive to this day. <laughs> like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Now watch this. Blessed is the man and woman whose quiver is filled with them he shall not be put to shame. Amen. So in, the, in, the, in the biblical world, having children was one of the ways to take shame away, to take shame away from you. That's mm -hmm. why Jacob's wife said, give me children or I die. Right. She'd rather die than not have children. Now, that's a whole other issue for women struggling with infertility. And there's grace for them, too. And there's, there's comfort for them, too. But think about how twisted the church has become to right. where... Pregnancy right. is a, mark a shameful of, thing. It's shameful. When <laughs> pregnancy is a mark of honor from a biblical perspective. Right, right. You did something wrong. You did something shameful. And you know how God responded? He honored you. That <laughs> okay. is how that you, 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 you've broke the law, which all of us have in this church. But God honored you and made you a mother. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to come together. We're going to support you. We're going to love you. We're going to celebrate right. you. We're going to celebrate God's grace to give you a child and our church a child and help us love and support you. That's and not going to take a step further. And we're going to, you know, you need help. Like, no, you know, you need help with your medical bills. You need to show you. you a baby shower so you can have all the stuff that you need. Like, I, oh, you need to go to work after the baby's born. Like, we're going to help you with childcare. We got you. <laughs> That's exactly. how we should be. So we're going to get into the science, but I'm pleading with you, if you're a Christian, please rethink this stuff. I just quoted the Bible. I wasn't getting, I was getting a little emotional, but it's the Bible. It's right there. Okay. You can, you, you can seek repentance for something you've done, but you can't take back the death of a child. 
and a lot of people you know people forget that sin does not mean burn in hell it doesn't mean unforgiven in the translation it means missed your mark it means to um, shoot an arrow albany we are definitely going to burn in hell i get told <laughs> that every day, every day. Yes. <laughs> Don't even yeah. tell anyway. <laughs> All right. So we talked about the secular angles of abortion. We talked about the religious angles. I, I want to spend some time to talk about the science. Ladies and gentlemen, now you two have you two have seen the actual moderated debate I did on this topic, and and it'll be right here uh, in the in the video when you guys get to it. If you if you have the patience of a saint, go watch the go watch the. Debate. I, I screamed at my phone several times. <laughs> <laughs> Albany, what are we killing in an abortion? A llama, a unicorn, oh, an alpaca. <laughs> I asked the guy one time outside, I said, I said, what is being killed in an abortion? And he said, a potential human. Oh my gosh. Do you know sorry, how many times I've heard that this weekend? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, it's a fetus, which is its own species, because seventh grade biology. Because Karen said so. Because Karen, obviously Karen. All right. I, uh, so le leading into this, uh, outside of the Renaissance Hotel, actually, after the March for Life, the night of the March for Life, there was a guy bro-choicing for all his uterus holders, holding a sign saying, her body, her choice. And uh, he kept saying over and over that a fetus is no different than removing skin cells off your arm. And I swear to the almighty Zeus, if you believe that. Odin. I'm going to go, make you grab a switch from the yard and we're going to go old school. <laughs> okay. Here is the Oxford... English dictionary. This is the di dictionary definition of fetus. An unborn offspring of a mammal, in particular an unborn human baby, more than eight weeks after conception. I'll read another definition within the semantic domain. This was updated 20, uh, 10 January 2020. So then the screenshot will be here. So please, please save the, the comments. Fetus, a mammalian embryo during the later stages of development within the uterus. In humans, it is an unborn child from its eighth week of development. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're talking about killing a fetus, you're talking about killing an unborn human child. That's what it is. I, for one, am shocked. Shooketh. The Oxford... I University English Dictionary must be uh, uh, a it's a pro-life plant. It's a pro-life <laughs> pro <-life> plant. <laughs> I always tell people go to Mayo Clinic. Yeah, I love it because a Mayo Clinic, very openly pretty liberal, pro-choice. Really, there's no pro-life bio Mayo Clinic. They are one of the number one hospitals in the United States. They have an entire segment on their website that is just there, all about first trimester abortion, talks about brain development and the heart beating, not, not the little pulses, but the actual heart and the chambers forming and all these things, goes into detail of embryology, about how you cannot just, just be a living organism, but not belong to a species. Correct. You know, it, like, it, it, that doesn't make any sense at all. Like, how does that, like, how did anybody make sense of that ever? Like, it's, it's a living being, it's a living cell, but it's not any species. Well, you saw the debate that I had where the guy said, yeah, that's what the scientists say, but we can't really define what a human being is. That's what he said to me. <clears throat> I always have to <clears throat> ask, like, I, I always feel like I have to dumb it down a lot and like go very slow. Be like, so do you mean human being? Or are you thinking about personhood? Like I genuinely feel that's like I have to move my mouth. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I had that exact argument this weekend. Like the lady with the bloodstained pants, she actually interviewed me, and it's probably never going to see the light of day. I tweeted at her yesterday, and I retweeted it because I wanted a <laughs> copy of the footage. But like she said, like she's like it's a potential human being, and like I'm like you can't be a potential human being either. It's a human being or it's not a human being. She's like, well, sperm is a potential human being. I was like, dear Lord, woman. <laughs> like the closest thing you could get to what a potential human being is is 
when you have sex, you have the potential to make a human being. That's right. the closest you're going to get with the accuracy of that statement. Right. <laughs> you're, right. You're killing a human being. You're killing a human baby. I'm on the Mayo Clinic. Uh, the first few months of pregnancy, the first trimester, are marked by rapid changes for both you and your baby. That's the Mayo Clinic, calling it a baby. It is a baby. Now, now go now, through. You'll, you'll love it. Go through, like, obviously not right now, but, like, go through the whole first trimester of everything they touch on. They have a... It's so amazing. <laughs> And they have like a really extreme biological version and they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, here's, here's something that I will say going back to the original, um, the billboard where it talks about, um, you know, the whole bodily autonomy thing. It's this, it's this sort of implicit idea that the baby is the property of the mother. The baby is not the property of the mother. Mm -hmm. The baby's actually the responsibility of the mother. Mm -hmm. That's why when the baby is ex utero, there are negligence charges for any woman who will deliver a child and chuck it in the dumpster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is a distinction that we have to make. And this is particularly, I'm going to get very SJW. I'm going to paint some of you guys in a corner right now. This is particularly important to me as a black man in the United States of America. Just you know why? That. Because we were spoken of as what? The property, property of our slave owners. And you know what else people would say during the antebellum slave trade and all the abolitionist debates? They'd say, well, if you don't want a slave, don't have one. I was listening <laughs> to Michael Moore, and he was like, if you don't want an abortion, don't have one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy that there were people like John Brown and a bunch of Civil War soldiers who said, no, mm -hmm. no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mind my not business. Because what we're doing yeah. for folks is wrong. Can I? I'm not going to mind my business when, and, and I'm going to talk about the racial aspect here. 2014, 2015, more black babies were aborted in New York City than were born. So all these crazy SJW people, chumps are racist. Blah, blah, blah. Hello? Uh, if, if those numbers continue, you would literally eradicate black people from New York City if we... If we <laughs> That's what Planned Parenthood wants to do anyway. <laughs> Correct. I shot a documentary on that. Watch the Margaret Sanger documentary yep. I shot. So, I literally had a white woman, the woman with the bloodstained pants, tell me that it is a pro-life lie that Margaret Sanger was a racist that was trying to eradicate the black population. I was like, look, honey. Look, I, honey. I, shot, I, shot, I shot an entire video on it. And look, here's the thing about Margaret Sanger. She's a woman of her time. So she wasn't just against black people. She was also against immigrants and she was also, also against the disabled. Yeah. Where she mm -hmm. talked about the morbid fecundity of the disabled. You want to talk about forced sterilization? Look up Margaret Sanger. Correct. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Correct. It's the eugenics. It's the whole night. It was popular at the time. I'm not even mad at her because she's a woman at her time. What pisses me off though is modern people in 2020 stunting like they care about the black community. Mm -hmm while simultaneously uh, supporting something that has absolutely destroyed our community as a whole. Go ahead, Alden. No, I, well, two things. One, did you see the response I got from the, uh, the black woman who thanked me for admitting I was a racist, for saying that I was against the extermination of black people through the fact that many of them are exterminating themselves because of the percentages. And she told me that the fact that I would use the word exterminate meant that I believed black people were pests. And I just responded by going, how did you get the fact that I am, I literally stated I'm against the black population declining as being racist. And of course the whole comment section was just how, uh, it was, it was many black women saying they don't need a white woman, uh, like defending them. And I was like, I'm not defending you. I'm defending the children that you think it's okay to kill. Correct. Correct. Your mind has obviously gone off the range. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the black kids need white Albany Rose to defend them. Because you won't. I My cracker say, self will go up there and defend all of itself. It's good. Yeah, I can say it. It's a fact. It's a fact. Okay? Yeah, go look it up. It's not a lie. Even Snopes had to admit, yes, it's true. In 2014, 2015, more black babies were aborted in New York City than were born. Correct. It's true. 
You guys should just trade off. Like, Albany can give you, like, the uterus stamp of approval to talk about abortion. You can give her, like, the black stamp of approval to talk about black uterus. <laughs> 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 uh, what, what were you going to say, uh, Kay? <laughs> I don't no, even we're read. We're gonna burn the internet. <laughs> no one, we're just. <laughs> the internet is melting. YouTube's gonna revoke <laughs> membership. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, oh my word. It just, you know, it just, it kills me because, you know, we have, it's, we, there was actually this really, really great graphic made, you know, they have those political graphics, but it was a picture of, um, you know, the, the democratic, the donkey. Um, and he's like, it, it was like, um, taking money from like the black population, the minority population, and then like taking that money and just like funneling it back into the abortion industry, yeah. like talking to, you know, giving them all these, you know, incentives and like we care about you and we're for the minorities and we're for the black community just taking all of that support and funneling it back into the abortion facilities yeah you know it's it's so backwards and it's so sad because these people are so deeply indoctrinated it's going to take so long to undo the damage that our pro-abortion society has done to the minority population and the minority societies in our countries 100 percent. and i and i mean Take it a step further outside of uh, Planned Parenthood. Look at the Gosnell case. When all that happened, the women that he butchered were immigrants, some of them not legal. Yeah. I mean, that was years of the health department going, no, 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 it's fine. Yep. Report women dying and, and, and all these things. And it's incredible how many of them were immigrants. And it's really, it really makes me wonder where where is this taken seriously you know we're we're told that we don't care about anyone we don't care about immigrant children we don't care about anyone after they're born and here's a man who has butchered a hundred women from the mother's day massacre to when he fled the country came back you know after three years nothing happened to him and all these things and it's like who is really taking advantage of whether they're underprivileged disabled women of color yeah, the pro-life people. I was I was watching a discussion between. It was actually pretty instructive because uh, the 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 way that she was speaking. But they were using this argument about, well, you know, if somebody's poor and they're disenfranchised, then the kid's not going to have a good chance, and so it justifies abortion. And the woman responded by saying, basically, but she said it in a much more compassionate way. She basically said. Okay, so what you're saying is that poor people should basically be the ones that get eliminated in our society. And that we shouldn't create social structures mm. to give these kids a chance to thrive. I was in a homeless shelter with my mom and two brothers in Persephone, New Jersey, in the dead of winter. Mm -hmm. I'm glad some well-meaning uh, white person didn't show up with an AK-47 right. and mow us all down because we right. were in a terrible situation. Right. My strong black mother got herself up off of her feet. She overcame the bipolar walked into a hospital. She was a registered nurse, got herself a freaking job. My 16 year old brother went right after school and worked at uh, CVS and they combined their income to get us the hell out of there. That's what, that's what people do. We're pretty resilient as a species, whether you're a Christian or not, we're a damn resilient species. And who are we to tell this kid here's we're still on the science thing. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, when a woman is pregnant, she does not have two heads. 20 fingers, four hands, 20 toes, four legs. That'd be terrifying. There is one body and there is another body. Mm -hmm. It's not her body. So we are Therefore, making, it's not her choice. We're making a decision for another homo sapien. And are you good with that? And we're making a permanent decision. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right to choose death for another human being ever, ever crazy That's you don't get to decide like this part like this this child <laughs> might have a bad life so let's just kill that child because that's merciful you don't get to decide whose life is worth living i love whenever people bring up that argument it's like you know my my mom and dad were dirt poor whenever they found out that i was that she was pregnant with me my brother was two years old by all logic and definition she should have aborted me yeah. and it never was even something that crossed her mind Hi. <laughs> uh, and, and just, you know, just so that nobody, you know, it misinterprets Kay when she was talking about the donkey thing and 
funneling the money into um, abortion. We were talking off cam about we basically could be described as pro-life Democrats if uh, Mayor Pete would have us. I'm a libertarian um, by choice because I, I hate, I, I just, I hate the government. Yeah. Really, but <laughs> yeah, <okay>. but <laughs> so I, I would be, I would be, uh, you know, on, on, on the major hot button. <clears throat> I, I just want to make sure that people don't try to politicize this and say, ah, you nasty Republican. I, I would, None of us are Republican. Everybody relax. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we're not Republicans. This is not that. So don't try to go there. Um, but the problem is our party, uh, if you leave it to Mayor Pete, basically, he just condescended to that woman. We'll, we'll put mm -hmm. the link in the description. He basically told that woman, ah, get out of here. Uh, and I understand why he's a politician. But um, so don't don't try to make this a Republican Democrat thing. Um, because it's definitely not. Not that. Mm -hmm. There are millions of pro-life Democrats in America. So. There are millions of pro-life Democrats. There are millions of pro-life independents, pro-life libertarians. And the, the, the middle ground there that's growing because pro-lifers just can't find a home with either party is like, it's just like growing and growing and growing. They see that, you know, neither side is really doing anything for He's for kidding. us yes the, no we're not helping we're not helping the pre-born human we're not helping the pregnant human we're not helping the born human we're not helping the kids in foster care we're not helping the homeless no neither neither party is pro-life or pro-choice they're pro-money they're pro-power and so I'm that pro middle ground i'm pro planned parenthood not receiving 1.3 million dollars from the federal government every single right. day and putting this towards schools and foster systems and homeless right. shelters and women shelters and all these other things but you know, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, we've got to do this again. Maybe the next time one of these monsters tries to pass one of these nine month abortion things, mm -hmm. um, we can jump back on and, and kind of cut through the, uh, the nonsense. Cause we, we had to do that because a lot of people were saying, Oh no, it's only the woman's life. That's right, sick. Right. No, that's not what happened with New York. Don't even get me started on that. York had a statute since 1875 to give women abortions if their lives were at stake. That's not what that was. Here, there is the link right there. You can watch that video as well. Warren, uh, I mean Warren Hearn's website, the late-term abortion clinic, the guy here in Boulder, Colorado. First page of his website even says that it's un, it's not abnormal for late-term abortions to take four to five days. If her life is at stake, and you're waiting four to five days to remove correct. the fetus. Correct. Correct. That's drhern.com. A lot of people don't know. There are no gestational limits in your, uh, you're in Colorado? Yep. Yeah, so Colorado not only has no gestational limits, uh, we have not been able, we have tried to pass personhood laws specifically in the bills saying that someone can be tried only if it was a wanted fetus. And if someone intentionally or, or not intentionally, but if someone kills a wanted fetus, because uh, we had like not even 30 minutes away from me is where the Craigslist murder happened, mm -hmm. where that woman who was like third trimester, I'm assuming with that face, you 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 know you heard the story. Uh, yep, they decided that it was uh, not a uh, the the child was not in fact deemed a person because they couldn't find air in the lungs. Um, we tried passing the Brady Amendment. There was a woman that actually used to go to my husband's church. She was uh, two days from her due date. Got hit by a drunk driver. Her son Brady was killed in utero. He was not deemed a person, and uh, the guy was not at fault for his death because he. And every time we try to pass it, Planned Parenthood, NARAL, um, about 90% of religious Christian pro-choice leaders will actually get up and say that, and they always treat it like abortion. So, sorry, mm -hmm. I just had to throw that in there because a lot of people will say how, well, you know, pro-choice, but it's like if that was the case. These people are nightmarishly consistent. This is what I say all the time. They are night. The, that's one of the reasons why uh, they're one of it is a propaganda and the misinformation stuff that they do. Um, I, I showed somebody drhern.com. You can go right now. They wouldn't believe me. I'm like, this dude is hacking up kids seven, eight, nine months. No, 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 no. Only if the woman's no Down syndrome, killing kids right. eight, nine months. Oh, the one baby, yeah, that one baby that was aborted uh, because he was missing a thumb. Yep. Yeah. He was uh, missing a thumb. <laughs> Clef Palace, uh, Clef Foot, incredibly popular. Uh, Leroy Carhart, New York, Virginia, um, sometimes goes to New Mexico as well, I believe. Um, 
openly stated in numerous videos how it is not uncommon for him to have women 26 plus weeks, which is past my ability to come to his clinic because top two reasons being the relationship status changed mm -hmm. or she just couldn't make time sooner. Yeah. Or, and, and I swear, if someone doesn't believe me, go and watch the documentary after Tiller. This is a pro-choice, fully pro-choice documentary in support of George Tiller, who was murdered in front of his church for being a late-term abortion provider. We do not stand by Scott. That guy was wrong, by the way. We don't believe in gunning yeah. and killing anybody. Yeah, we please don't blow up Planned Parenthoods and kill doctors. Please don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, don't be a nut job. Yeah. Um, that, that entire documentary, they go and they interview Leroy Carhart, Warren Hearn. Uh, I always forget their names, but there's two late-term abortion women in uh, New Mexico one of which is actually still under investigation along with Warren Hearn for repeatedly living fetal remains inside women, by the way. Is that um, one super popular doctor? Is she super popular on Twitter, like Leah Torres? Is she not a late-term yeah, abortion? Uh, I, don't, I don't think Leah is in there. I think Leah only goes up to like, I don't even remember. Uh, oh, I don't think she's in that one, though. No. But yeah, uh, after Tiller, it's free on, it's free on YouTube. The, or the just go to the Gutmunker Institute. They're extremely pro-abortion, and even they will admit that the majority of late-term abortions are for elective reasons. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, the link for the After Tiller is right here. So all you have to do is click it, and it'll take you right to the, the video. If you want to get yourself informed, and if you want to see the truth, go for it. This is 2020, y'all. There is no reason. The, the whole clump of cell silliness, it worked in the 60s and 70s because we just didn't know right? Now, come on, y'all. If you're yeah. ignorant, it's because you're choosing to be. Mm -hmm. And then you have to ask yourself, why choose to be ignorant on such an existentially important topic? Very important question. Um, thank you guys so much. Albany, thank you so much for sharing. You guys did great. Sorry, thank you for bearing your heart. I know that this is never easy for you. Kay, coming through in the clutch. Thank you guys. And thank you guys for uh, tolerating a uh, non-uterus having uh, homo sapien that, uh, bless God, after the Civil War, I am now a person, so I, I get to have a voice. But uh, previous to that, I was in the same situation as these babies. I, I think you could still be a llama. <laughs> I could still be a llama. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. There you go. Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. Till next time, guys. Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> bring the funk, bitches! I was totally gonna be like really quick. I was like, "Sorry, stand up." I love you. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we can yeah, do a little. We'll, just, we'll, just we'll do a little commercial. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, get yourself a sexy pro life shirt. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back. We're back. No, get your damn face we're off. We're back on. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, speaking of which, speaking of which. Um, so the, the purple shirt, go ahead, show it. What, what does that say on your purple shirt? It Bang. says, all I need is coffee and a baby saving attitude. Bang. <laughs> we got, we got, uh, Albany, I reject my parenthood. And then this is actually my favorite shirt that you have, yes. Albany. It says pro-life feminist on her. And, uh, Sori's <laughs> hitting the gym now. She's literally the strongest f female I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Good, uh, we have a nice she's down now. there pumping iron, uh, all pro life and shit. I yeah. mean, and stuff. <laughs> it's very sexy. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> this is what creates baby. Okay, uh, Albany Rose is um, uh, selling that stuff. And and um, look, she it, had a lot of different shirts, some yes. of them are like they're really good ones. Yes. I was like debating between a couple of them. And really, it depends on which. It, there's, there's something for everyone. If you want, I'm doing, I'm doing a big sale right now. Just oh, right now. <laughs> and and we are, dear listener, are going to give away uh, a couple Albany. We're going to buy them and then give them away. Uh, so here's what's going to happen. The magic number is 389. If you watch the video all the way to the end, and you want a. Uh, an Albany Rose shirt. We're going to put the link to the to the place where you can see which shirt you want. Um, we will choose three winners. We'll buy them, and then we'll send you the shirt um, free of charge. Uh, we'll cover everything, shipping everything, because um, we really – the shirts are awesome. They're for a really, really good cause. And then, uh, Kay, you um, – we're going to we're gonna have all your socials, like, on the video and such, and so yours too, Albany. 
Um, and Kay, are there any other groups that you're a part of? Uh, not currently, not right now. Um, I have, a, yeah, I have a lot of groups that I support. Definitely check out, like I said, Embrace Grace. They do amazing work. Uh, definitely check out Rehumanize International. They're based out of Pittsburgh, and they are a consistent life ethic group. So they are against abortion. They're against euthanasia. They're anti-war. Um, and they're, they're an up-and-coming uh, organization. Definitely look into them. They're more of a fringe pro-life group, not what you think of whenever you think of a pro-life organization. So I think that, you know, we definitely need to promote those more fringe pro-life organizations. You know, be inclusive, get those different messages out there. Include the pro-life atheists like Albany because she's awesome. And, uh, yeah, definitely check them out and support them. And when does the ranting podcast start? Oh, yes, this is happening. <laughs> yeah. We'll just have a lot of coffee after kids go to bed. We'll just sit here curled yes. up in like robes, like, and done. I hate everybody. Let's talk about babies. <laughs> yes. And uh, we can get you set up with Anchor because Anchor gets you, you put your podcasting in it and then it sends it to all the major podcast outlets for free. That's awesome. So, we uh, love free stuff. <laughs> I mean, Michael Moore uses it, and he's a, he's a big dude. Um, so, yeah, I think you guys would take off. Uh, you guys are very, very necessary. Uh, we did something really cool. Really, really cool. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. I mean, both of you for having us on. And, I mean, I am so grateful to have found you. God, it's, I think it's been like two years now, a year yeah. and a half. I found you guys on YouTube, and I told you how much I loved you. And both you guys were like, I think we know who you are too. And it just blossomed from there. And, and Kay, I mean, I have a girl crush on you. That's not new. It's fine. <laughs> she, she just left. <laughs> She's like, I'm gone. <laughs> no, she, uh, tell, say, the rewind that last part. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows I have a girl crush on Kay. It's fine. It's new. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody knows that. Me and, me and Albany are married secretly. Nobody, like, <laughs> Well, someone, the, actually asked if, uh, someone asked if the good thing is with. at least they can't get pregnant out of wedlock. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> See, Jesus would support it. Everyone can show. I have to for that girl to get pregnant. <laughs> All these Christians come in for the gays, but at least you know they're not getting pregnant out of wedlock. Right, right. <laughs> you know, a chance for you throw them off the building with ISIS. Good oh night. gosh. <laughs> all right, all right. You too, <laughs> All right, love you, girl. Seriously. Pray for y'all. Keep your head up. Keep it moving. Um, and uh, we definitely got to get on those shirts mm -hmm. like as soon as possible. Inshallah. I also right. have tote bags. Huh? I said I also have tote bags. Okay. okay. Tote bags as well. Mm -hmm. Send us the links of any of the stuff that we need to put, and I'll put it in the description of the video. And the video of the crotch grabbing, grabbing people, send that too. Mm -hmm. Remember that part? I got you. Okay. Don't cool. forget. Okay. Yes. All right, ladies. Good night. All right, good job, good baby. Night. You rocked it. You're my hero. Good job. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.